Shape Outside is a fairly new property and it's really cool. It allows us to do some things with floats that previously were not possible. The CSS property called Shape Outside lets you wrap text that conforms to the shape of your image. The Shape Outside CSS property changes the shape of items that are wrapped. Instead of being limited to a rectangular bounding box around the image or some other element, Shape Outside allows us to shape content to fit the image. The Shape Outside property controls how content will wrap around a floated element's bounding box. Typically, this is so that text can reflow around a shape and make the shape a circle, an ellipse, or even a polygon. In order for the Shape Outside property to work, these two conditions must be met. The element must be floated. The element whose float area you're changing must be a float. Also, the element must have intrinsic dimensions. The height and the width set on an element will be used to establish and coordinate a system on that particular element. Let me show you what this looks like. Here's the HTML that we're starting with. What I want you to focus on is that we have an article with a class of example one. It contains an H2, an image, and a paragraph. What we are gonna do is we are gonna go into our CSS. We are gonna target the example one image. In order to make the image circular, I'm gonna use my border radius of 50%. Then I'm gonna go ahead and float the image on the left. Now, if we save the page and we look at it in the browser, you're going to see that the image is indeed circular, but the text is wrapping in a square type fashion. We do not want the text to wrap in this way. Visually, it does not look very appealing. And you can see that it would look much better if the text followed the flow on the image. Luckily, we are able to do this with CSS. We're gonna be using the shape outside property. Once we use shape outside, we're going to type a circle and open parentheses. This function is going to create a circle, and then we need to specify what type of circle. In this case, I want a perfect circle, so I'm going to write 50%. You can use very similar function to create elliptical type shapes as well. If we save and we refresh in the browser, you can see now how my text wraps around this circular shape. This is a really elegant and beautiful solution and has literally been accomplished with one line of code. Let's go ahead and go back into the HTML. I'm going to uncomment out the second section of my page. We'll save and refresh. Now it is worth noting that depending on the size of my page, you can see how each of these areas are separate. I already went ahead and used my pseudo element selector and applied it to the article after. This is applying a clear, and since we're using floats in all of our article examples, this was a very easy way that I could attach the clear to something that didn't actually exist on the page. We talked about this in an earlier video, so if you're not familiar with this technique, I suggest you go back and review the pseudo class and pseudo element video that I made for you earlier. Now the image on example two is not circular and it certainly is not square. We are going to use the same sort of process, but this time we're going to use the shape outside polygon feature. So I'll start off by floating my image to the left. I'm going to add a little bit of margin. In addition to using a regular margin, we also have something called shape margin. It pretty much works in a very similar way. I'm gonna set this to half an M. Now, I'm going to use shape outside. This time, I'll pass in polygon. When you use polygon, this particular function creates any shape that has three or more vertices. Creating complex shapes using the shape function can be a daunting task, especially if you're creating one with many points and coordinates for the polygon function. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by just passing in three random values, and then I'm gonna show you a tool that can help make the process of this much easier. We plot points for each of the vertices on our polygon, and we separate those points by commas. So to start off with, I'm just gonna write three vertices, and I'll spread them out by 10 pixels each. 
Now, if we save and look at this in our browser, we're not getting anything close to what we want. In order to visually help create the appropriate type of shape, I'm going to actually do this inside of Firefox. The Firefox developer tools have a really great feature that makes this process so much easier. Here's the exact same page in Firefox. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open my developer tools and you can access these in the exact same way by right clicking and choosing inspect. Now, if we select the image in the second article, you can see here is the shape outside property and, and here are the values that we're using. Notice there's a little polygon icon and if I click this, it actually will show me the polygon points that I have. So I can grab these points and I can start to reshape the polygon. You can see the text will flow around the shape based on where I put these points. Now I'm going to need quite a few more points in order to make the proper polygon shape so that the text flows around my seahorse. What you can do is you can actually click on the CSS and as I've manipulated some of these points, you can see that it's added new values into my polygon value function. What I'll do is I'll just put in a comma and I'm just going to type in some new values. I find it easier if you type values that are larger than what's currently there. So I'll use 150 by 90 pixels. I'm going to hit a comma again and I'll just continue to type. I'll do 170 by 110 pixels. When you hit your comma, border box will populate so you can just continue to type and then that will go away. The reason that I'm spreading out the points is because it makes it easier to see them along my polygon shape. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get these all twisted up. So just keep that in mind. And once you have these points, you can go ahead and begin to just place them where you want them to be. Doing this will give you a lot of control over how the text is going to wrap around your image. If you find that you need another point, then just go in here and then just plot in another point onto your element. I'm going to add one more set of points. Just remember that each set of points is separated by a comma. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, in order to save the values that you've plotted in, what you'll do is you'll click on the values and then simply copy them. And then I'll come back into my CSS and I'm just going to replace this code with the code that I just generated in Firefox. If I save now and we refresh our page, you can see that the polygon is now going ahead and dictating how the text wraps around this shape. This is pretty awesome, isn't it? For my final example, I'm going to show you one other thing that we can do using shape outside. I will uncomment out the final area of my code and you can see that I have another image followed by a paragraph. I'll go into my CSS and what we're going to do here is we're going to target our example three image. Once again, I'm going to float this element and I'll float it to the left. And now I'm going to use shape outside. This time I'm going to use inset in the parentheses you can specify how you want the text to be inset. I'm going to use 80 pixels, 110 pixels, and then I'm going to pass in 10 pixels and 10 pixels again. These values are specifying top, right, bottom, left, and it is possible to pass in a border radius value as well. I don't need that, so I'm just going to leave this as is. I will save and if we refresh you can see how my text is going to go over the image since i'm still inside of firefox if i right click and choose inspect just like what we saw before we'll get this little polygon shape and if we click it we can see the values that we've plugged in so if i want to see how manipulating these values could change the way the text sits over my image I can experiment with that 
and adjust these numbers as needed. The inset property value is going to allow the text to come inside of the floated element. It basically offsets inward from the edge of the element. CSS shapes allows us to define geometric shapes that text can flow around. These shapes can be circles, ellipses, simple or complex polygons. We really have a ton of flexibility and this allows us to create much more sophisticated layouts using CSS.